In his book, The Essential Woodworker, Robert Wearing describes three different classes of saw cuts, third class, second class, and first class. And these three different classes of cuts are differentiated based on the level of precision required for the cut. Now, we briefly discussed the three classes of saw cuts earlier when we talked about choosing saws based on the level of criticality of the cut. So let's take a closer look at how to lay out and make each of these different classes of saw cuts, starting with the third class cut. So the third class cut is the least critical of the three classes of saw cuts, and we typically use it for things like breaking down oversized lumber. And it's a cut that we can lay out roughly with chalk or pencil and just make the cut quickly. So I have a board here that needs to be cut to rough size. Um, I am going to use a square and I recommend you do the same. Um, and I'm going to lay this out so that I have at least an extra half of an inch in length than I need in my finished piece. Usually I'll go uh, all the way up to an inch. And the reason for that is because I'm going to further process this board after I cut it. I might rip it into smaller strips. I'm going to plane it. Um, so, and I'm going to cut it to final length with finer saws. So I want to make this cut quickly and efficiently and leave a little extra that I can clean up later. So I'm going to use a saw, one of my rougher saws, longer rougher saws, because I want to make this cut quickly and efficiently. I'm not so concerned about the finish of the cut. So as I discussed in the last uh, sequence, I'm going to line myself up with the cut line. I'm going to get the saw on the cut line. I'm going to get my body lined up so that the saw, my wrist, my forearm, elbow, upper arm, shoulder, and right eye are all in alignment. And then I can start making this cut. Now I'm doing this at the workbench, but you would do very similar if you were doing this at the saw bench. And my goal is to track this line with my left eye and to track the top of the saw with my right eye so that I'm staying plumb. So the cut starts out fairly flat. And this is so that I can get my line established along here. And for what it's worth, this is also how you would correct a cut that starts to drift off line. You wouldn't try to twist the saw, you drop the saw low and get yourself back on your line. Once you were back on line, then you could raise the saw a little bit. Now, as I get my cut established, I can raise the saw up a little bit more. This is going to take some pressure off my back since I'm working on the workbench. Um, and I can focus on, again, keeping the saw plumb and square and moving through the cut with efficiency. An alternative way to saw at the workbench is to use the bench vise and hold the board vertically. And if you have a saw bench, that is of course a third way that you can make this kind of cut. One last thought about the third class saw cut. While this cut is typically less critical than your joinery cuts, it's no less important. In fact, I think it's even more important because it provides you with lots of opportunity to practice your sawing. These cuts, as we mentioned, are really not finished cuts. They're oversized. You're going to likely process this board further with more different tools. 
and then cut it to final length later. But it doesn't make sense to just blow through these cuts and not really think about them. It's a great opportunity to use to practice your sawing. Lay out a square line, practice your posture, work on setting up to the line and making a nice straight square cut. And you'll find that when you're able to confidently and efficiently make nice straight long cuts with your long saws, your joinery cuts are going to improve as well.